There was excitement in the air that day. I didn't understand a lot of what they said, but I was good with feelings and with the energy that ran between the people like live wires. I picked up on the terrible sadness a few of them held, too, but it was much less present than the excitement, so I didn't worry too much about it. Humans were complicated like that, happy and sad at the same time, sometimes angry. Never angry with me, though. They loved me, I thought, even if my cages had gotten smaller and the days longer. They loved me. It had been like any other day, any other time, until they put me inside the craft and strapped me down. I had been good, and was rewarded by spending the entire day before with the scientist and his children. I was determined to be good again, so I could go home with them that night as well. When they fitted the helmet onto my head, pushing my ears down roughly, I searched the crowd for the scientist's face. I found it, familiar but so sad. Why was he sad? Did I do something wrong? I kept as still as possible. I really, really wanted him to take me home again and I want so much to make them all happy. The hatch closed, and I was alone. The thick glass window tiny and difficult to see through. There was fear in me, bright and painful, but I kept still. I was so sure they'd let me out soon. It had to just be another tiny cage, nothing to worry about. Time passed, and I reached a paw up to scratch the window. It had been long enough. I wanted out. I felt the heat permeating the floor before the surrounding walls started to move. The rocket roared to life, vibrations rattling my small body, and terror gripped my heart. Somehow I knew the ground was slipping away beneath me. It was like the entire world was pulling up and away, pushing me down. Then, the warm metal became hot. I barked, struggling against my bonds until finally I slipped them, but there was still nowhere for me to go in the small craft. Panting, I tried to stay calm, but it was impossible. The muscles in my legs itched to bolt. Stuck. I was so stuck. Outside, the sky was blue, then violet. Finally, it was all replaced by a void of black. The craft slowed, and whatever force was pressing me down disappeared, taking with it the gravity that had always tethered me to the ground. Floating, I whimpered and tucked my tail between my legs, searching for any sort of comfort but there was none, just cold metal and the feeling of weightlessness. The familiar smells of earth vanished, replaced by sterile metallic odors that stung my sensitive nose. I sneezed, and around me, the sensors beeped. Why did they choose me? What did I do wrong? I was good, wasn't I? I was so good. Just a day ago, I had chased my tail in circles, feeling the grass beneath my paws, the children close at my heels as I ran. I could have gone faster, but I didn't, wanting them to catch me and hold me and kiss the space between my eyes. I tried to seek solace in my memories. I was in a warm home surrounded by laughter and the gentle touch of children. Their tiny hands embraced me, their faces filled with joy at my presence. We played fetch in the yard, their giggles echoing through the air. I remember the scientist, a kind man with glasses perched on his nose who would rub my ears 
and talked to me in a soothing voice. I remembered the last words I heard him say. I wanted to do something nice for her. She had so little time left to live. He was talking about me, wasn't he? I guess I didn't realize that today was going to be the day that I died. He called me Laika. It was a name that made me feel special. A name that made me believe I was loved and valued. Not just dog. Not specimen. I was Laika. I wished I was back there, curled up on a soft rug, basking in their affection. But then, as I ascended higher and higher, panic overwhelmed me. I pressed my paws against the walls of the capsule, desperate for something solid to ground me, but it only made me drift more. They took me off the streets, and I lived in cages, smaller and smaller until the final one that was shot into the sky. Would I have traded a tiny cage for this? I don't know. I don't think I was ready to die. The sky was dark, and my world was so quiet. I floated, a little dog, pathfinder, trailblazer, four-legged daughter of Earth, loved for a single day and given to the sky. I wanted, more than I had wanted anything, to go home, even if I didn't really know exactly where home was. But I couldn't. So I traded that want for sleep as the craft began to cool and hoped the innocent hope that I would wake up back in a twin-sized bed with the child's arm thrown over my neck. Days had passed since I left Earth behind, suspended in the weightlessness of space. My stomach growled, and thirst crawled at my parched throat. My tongue felt heavy and dry. I licked my chapped lips, but it offered no relief. Exhaustion had overtaken me. My eyes struggled to stay open, my body growing weaker with each passing moment. Panic had lost its grip, replaced by a numb resignation. I drifted, floating aimlessly in the void. Sometimes I would sleep and then dream, but wake up in the same dark place. In other times, my tiny window would turn to face the blue glow of Earth, and I would strain with everything left in me towards it. I just didn't understand. I don't think I ever would. It was during one of those restless sleeps that I felt a shift in the craft. It moved purposefully, no longer drifting but pulled by unseen forces. The sudden change jolted me from my lethargy, and my ears perked up, straining to catch any sound beyond the hum of the machinery. I sensed a different kind of movement, a deliberate pull away from the familiar presence of Earth. Again, I felt fear. I didn't want to leave the last familiar thing that I would ever know, the hold of the world's orbit. If I had to die, I would rather die in that embrace, seeing the place that had pushed me so far away. A pioneer, a voyager, a little brown dog. And maybe, just maybe my journey would pave the way for others to follow, for a future where dogs and people would touch the same stars and not die there. A future where every little dog would be loved. The acceleration of my tiny craft intensified, propelling me forward at an alarming speed. The stars streaked past me, their brilliance blurred by the sheer velocity of my journey. I could hear the shaking of my craft, like the speed of it all would tear my last sanctuary apart. And then, in the midst of the chaotic rush, I glimpsed something ahead, a colossal shiny structure, its gunmetal gray exterior blocking out the stars. 
my heart raced, panic surging through my veins once again. Instinctively, I searched for an escape route, a place to hide or flee, but there was nowhere to run within the confines of my small capsule. I was trapped. I had been for days, but inevitability had been the only thing to fear. Whatever was making me move was new. A strange gravitational force tugged at my vessel, and I braced myself, feeling the strain against my body. With a jolt, my capsule was enveloped inside the thing, and all at once, the weightlessness was gone. The transition was abrupt. The quiet hum of the machinery replaced by an echoing silence. Darkness cloaked my craft, broken only by the flickering glow of control panels. Something primal in me told me to struggle now that my feet were once more underneath me. And so I did. Scratching, biting and throwing myself against the walls of my vessel. Until I panted, exhausted, tongue lolling from my mouth. Finally, it all came to a stop. And outside my small window I could see faint shapes as I waited inside whatever had captured me. My ears were attuned to every sound. The vibrations subsided and my craft came to a halt, and anticipation prickled at my fur. Through the tiny window I caught glimpses of movement in the vast chamber beyond. It was a room unlike any I had ever seen, expansive and filled with an otherworldly glow. The noises that reached my ears were unfamiliar a cacophony of strange echoes and distant murmurs. Caution battled with curiosity within me. With hesitant steps, I inched closer to the closed hatch, my little heart pounding. A rush of air, cool and tinged with the scent of the unknown, brushed against my snout as the door of my capsule popped open. It was an invitation but a growl grew in my throat, a clear warning. The sounds grew louder, so I did too, lips curling over my teeth. I could see figures, their forms shadowed against the radiant backdrop. Their silhouettes moved in the light, tall and willowy, thin like the branches of a tree. That primal panic was still there in my empty belly. But there was something else sliding across my thoughts, like a soothing balm. It made me brave. Brave girl, the man who strapped me into the craft had said. Good luck out there. With newfound determination, I stepped forward, my paws crossing the threshold of my spacecraft. The sounds of the silhouettes stopped as they came into clear view the clicking and chirping going silent. I was a simple dog with simple thoughts, and fears carried over from when my ancestors ran the Siberian tundra in packs of many. But I was also Laika, a spacefarer, the first conscious thing to see the world from above. So I pressed forward, nails clacking on the metal hatch. The beings before me stood tall and spindly. I was reminded of insects back on Earth, their jerky movements and multifaceted eyes making the resemblance even more striking. Their bodies were adorned with iridescent patterns that shimmered. Three clawed hands extended from their appendages, each digit delicately articulated. In my weakened state, I was drawn closer to them by that soothing aura. My paws treaded carefully upon the foreign ground, the sound of my footsteps mingling with the gentle echoes of their alien sounds. Their outstretched hands beckoned me with encouraging motions, urging me to come closer. With each faltering step, the hunger and thirst that consumed me were momentarily overshadowed by a glimmer of hope. I trusted them 
even beyond my own instincts for survival. What life was left for me back on that craft anyway? And so, driven by both desperation and a newfound desire to be closer, I moved towards the beings. My tail, once held low between my legs, now brushed tentatively against the floor. It was so warm, and being able to stretch my weary legs was wonderful. There were so many new things to smell. The metallic tang of the ship's interior mingled with an intriguing scent that must have been that of the beings. Hunkered over, I shrunk in stature, a posture of vulnerability. One of the aliens extended a clawed hand toward me, and my muscles tensed, ready to recoil at the slightest hint of danger. But then, with a mixture of surprise and relief, I discovered a tenderness in their touch. The hand that reached out to me was hard, but moved with unmistakable kindness. It was a touch that resonated with the memories of the scientist and his children, the gentle caresses that filled my day with warmth and love. The clawed hand flexed, the points scratching my neck. A pet. It was petting me. I wasn't going to die after all. In that fleeting minute, my fear subsided, overshadowed by a new connection. A whine crawled up from my throat, and at that moment I would have given my life to that being. The calming presence intensified rolling over me like waves. I felt a surge of serenity coursing through my weary body. The towering alien bent down, their massive form looming above me, and with a delicate touch, they removed the helmet and the sensors that had encased me since before my journey began. As the constraints fell away, a flood of images cascaded through my mind. I saw landscapes I had never set foot upon, parts of earth that I would have never seen. There were bustling city streets, sprawling meadows, blue oceans, and even a glimpse of a dog with a litter of puppies. It made me think of the warmth of my mother's body, pressed close with my litter mates in a cold Russian back alley. It was a longing for connection a yearning for the bonds that once held me close. Overwhelmed by the kindness bestowed upon me, another whine escaped my throat, reverberating with gratitude. With my newfound freedom, I stood before them, my tail wagging with uncontainable joy. The being motioned me closer towards the rest of the group, but with the fear and adrenaline gone, I no longer felt so strong. Weary and weakened, my steps faltered, and I stumbled in my attempt to move forward. But before frustration could take over, the alien scooped me up into its arms. Its chest rumbled with a soothing vibration, like the beating of a bee's wings. Drifting in and out of sleep, I nestled against the alien's embrace finally basking in the warmth that surrounded me. As my eyelids grew heavy, dozens of human languages filled my mind, a chorus of voices that blended together. Amidst the meaningless sounds, I could understand fragments of familiarity, snippets of Russian words that struck a chord within me. Then, as if a ray of sunlight pierced through a cloudy sky, a word I understood emerged from the sea of voices. Dog. It resonated in my mind, reminding me of my identity, reflecting the connection between species. In response, I let out a yip, my voice a testament to my understanding. The alien, taken aback for a moment, gazed down at me with shining eyes 
filled with curiosity and surprise. It repeated the word in my mind once more, seeking confirmation. I yipped a second time, and its vibrations shifted, a higher pitch resonating with mirth. I was carried gently through the ship, cradled in the alien's arms, surrendering to the comfort and safety they provided. Finally, we reached a new room that felt sterile, dominated by a silver table right in the center. The alien laid me on the table, causing me to come fully awake once more before it left. Lying in the room that bore a resemblance to the sterile medical chambers of my past, fear began to creep back in. Memories of examinations and invasive procedures resurfaced, sending shivers down my spine. The absence of the alien who had carried me made it even worse. But just as apprehension tightened its grip, the first alien returned, bringing with it a sense of familiarity. It wrapped me in a velvety blanket, providing a soft cocoon of warmth. The touch alone was soothing. With a gentle motion, the alien presented me with a bowl filled with a beige goo. Its scent tickled my nose, causing me to sneeze in response. Uncertainty swirled, questioning the nature of this strange sustenance. Yet the alien persisted, motioning towards the bowl repeatedly. Amidst my hesitation, the word dog echoed in my mind once again, followed by a string of Russian words that were unfamiliar to me. But then, like a guiding star in the darkness, the alien paired the word dog with eat. The connection clicked, and comprehension dawned on me. Dog eat. Dog eat. The words repeated, urging me to take a leap of faith. Though the goo may have appeared unappetizing, there was trust in the alien's eyes and an underlying concern for my well-being. Gathering my courage, I inched closer to the bowl. Sniffing hesitantly, I caught a whiff of unfamiliar flavors, my senses recoiling for a moment. But the alien's reassuring gaze remained fixed upon me, their intent clear. Drawing upon my instincts, I nudged the bowl tentatively, tasting a small lick of the goo. Surprisingly, it carried a subtle hint of nourishment, a blend tailored to my canine needs. With each subsequent lick, my initial skepticism faded. My new companion was feeding me, and I wanted to trust them, to make them proud. I watched them as I ate, and they looked back. A bond formed between us, the alien and I. In the simple act of feeding, a bridge was built, bridging the gap between us. The alien told me another word, mind to mind. It was my favorite by far. Friend. Friend. And so I ate, reassured by the presence of the alien who had taken me in from the coldness of space, feeling the nourishment of the goo that filled my belly, providing sustenance and quenching my thirst. I knew I was safe. Wrapped in the softness of the blanket, I finished my meal and laid my head on my paws, watching the alien presence, once unfamiliar and intimidating now felt like a guardian watching over me. It petted my head again, claw gently scratching, chest vibrating happily. I rested in that room, a sanctuary. I dreamt of home, alleyways, cages, and the scent of earth after rain. Interweaving with it all were memories of the scientist and his children, the laughter and love that I had so longed for. Maybe it could still be mine, 
just in a different world. Among it all, the sound of dog repeated, a reminder of my identity and my place in the universe. Little dog, traveler, friend. It had been ten years since I was pulled from the coldness of space and into the arms of the Zephyrins. In the early days of my arrival, the aliens diligently sought to understand the extent of my comprehension. They recognized the words that made sense to me, and with patience and care, they began to teach me their own language. Though our communication remained mostly mind to mind, the aliens used their unique vibrational sounds, akin to buzzing and humming, to convey emotions and intentions. I did the same through yips, barks, and growls. My constant companion, the alien who had first cradled me in its arms, was called Lumina. Lumina and I had forged a connection, and they never cared once that I was a simple dog. When they rested, I curled up by their side, lulled into sleep by their subtle vibrations and the feeling of their clawed hands in my fur. Lumina loved me, and I loved Lumina. I remember the first day I stepped into the alien grass for the first time. It was a sensation unlike anything I had ever known. The grass was soft beneath my paws, each blade pulsating with a vibrant energy and the rhythm of life itself. It tickled my fur as I trotted along, watching the swaying of the alien flora. The world unfolded before me, full of new sights and sounds. Majestic trees reached towards the cerulean sky, their leaves shimmering in hues unknown to me. Flowers, with vibrant and otherworldly petals, made my nose itch. Rivers, crystal clear and teeming with life, meandered through the landscape, inviting me to quench my thirst and cool my paws. As Lumina guided me through this new and strange place, I was captivated by Zephyra's inhabitants, and they were equally taken with me. It was a different home than the one I longed for, floating through the universe, but a home nonetheless. Years passed on Zephyra. Lumina and the other aliens came to a profound realization regarding my intellectual capabilities and the limitations of my canine lifespan. They understood that if I were to fully comprehend the complexities of their world, and if I were to continue my journey alongside them, changes would need to be made. Lumina presented me with an offer that held both immense promise and irreversible consequences. To unlock the full potential of my mind and extend my lifespan to match that of the aliens, I would need to undergo a transformative procedure that altered my very genetic makeup. This would make me smarter, capable of comprehending the intricacies of Zephyra, and grant me the gift of an extended life. It would be one that would span hundreds of years or more, thanks to their regenerative DNA. However, this choice came with a heavy price. If I would undergo the procedure, I would sever the possibility of ever returning to Earth. It would mean forever closing the door on the memories of my past and the painful realization of how humans launched me into space. I would know just how willing the humans had been to hurt me, just to gain knowledge. How so little care was given to snuffing out my life. It was a decision that required me to sacrifice the chance to reconcile my past with the future that Lumina offered. As Lumina presented me with this choice, my simple canine mind struggled to fully comprehend the depth and magnitude of what was being proposed. But within me resided an undeniable longing to be by Lumina's side, to traverse Zephyra together, 
and to experience the joys and wonders of a world where compassion and understanding flowed freely. At that moment, I relied on the bond that Lumina and I had forged, with a trust that had grown steadfast over the years. I made a choice born of loyalty and love. I accepted Lumina's offer, willing to undergo the transformative procedure that would forever bind me to Zephyra, forsaking the memories of Earth and the cruel treatment I had endured. As I gave my consent, the path before me diverged, irrevocably altering the trajectory of my existence. To me, back then when my thoughts were short and my understanding limited, there was one fact I was certain of, certain to my very bones. I knew that home and love was with Lumina. As the anesthesia began to take hold, my consciousness drifted into memories, transporting me back to the scientist and his children. In that fleeting moment of fading awareness, I was overwhelmed by a wave of bittersweet longing. The affection I had experienced during those brief moments on Earth intertwined with a profound sadness at the realization that I was merely an unwitting participant in an experiment. I remembered the tiny cage, the needles, the way the helmet squished my ears down and my scalded paws from the floor of the craft before gravity disappeared and made me weightless. The hunger and thirst, the terror, the pain. When I awakened from the procedure, a melancholic haze briefly clouded my thoughts. The weight of my past bore down upon me, reminding me of the agony I had once known. But as my gaze met Lumina's, a beacon of warmth and understanding, the spiral of sadness began to dissipate. Just like the day we first met, they wrapped me in the velvety warm blanket and carried me home. And for the first time, I understood the impossible, miraculous road that had brought me here. As the years passed, I came to understand that the concept of pets was foreign to the Zephyrins. To them, I was not just a mere companion animal. I was regarded as another person, an individual deserving of respect. In this realm, I was seen as an equal, cherished for the essence of who I was. Alongside Lumina, I encountered other aliens who had been rescued by the Zephyrins. Among them was Felicity, a feline companion who shared a bond with me that spanned beyond words. The first cat humans had sent into space, brought back from the brink of death, just like me. Together we forged a community of diverse beings, united by our shared experiences of rescue. Now, I find myself sitting before a gathering of curious Zephyrin children, a circlet adorning my head to amplify the projection of my thoughts. As I recount the tale of my rescue, their eyes shimmer with wonder and curiosity. When I open the floor to questions about Earth, an array of hands shoot up eagerly. Happiness fills my heart as the children's inquiries pour forth, their genuine curiosity igniting a purpose within me. I am here to bridge the gap between Earth and Zephyra, to share the wonders of my past and provide insight into the world I once called home. In this role, I find a sense of fulfillment, a profound purpose, an ambassador for Earth. Glancing down at Felicity, slumbering peacefully at my feet, contentment washes over me. In this world, I have discovered a place where I can thrive, share my stories, and find connection. As I continue to weave the tapestry of stories, sharing the fragments of Earth's beauty with the eager Zephyrin children, I am grateful 
for the journey that has brought me here. And most of all, for my friend, my home, my Lumina. I was, and I am, Laika. First dog in space. First eyes to see new horizons. I am Laika, a little dog. And I am loved.